Hi, Kitty Cats. A comment I received chided me for talking up the benefits I've gotten from gender-affirming surgery without equally discussing the risks and contraindications. The comment claimed my videos could cause a depressed 12-year-old to go out and get surgery without truly wanting or needing it and then regret it for the rest of their life. Now, I think back to the one depressed 12-year-old I'm qualified to make guesses about, that'd be me in 1982, and I find my only regret is spending so much of my life without gender-affirming care. But it isn't the hypothetical regret of a hypothetical 12-year-old in a hypothetically depressed state that's worth considering. The reason it took 40 years of my life before I received gender-affirming care at all is that it's really dang hard to get. So let me tick over what I had to do to get to the point that I can make these videos about it. The endocrinology involved in hormone replacement therapy is tricky. Small dosages can make big changes in biochemistry, and the therapy has to be monitored closely. Many endocrinologists won't touch HRT at all, and finding a GP willing to accept that liability is difficult. Hormone therapy requires skill, finesse, luck, and arts, because every human body responds to hormones differently and requires unique, specialized treatment. So now let's talk about surgery. I was expected to have received therapeutic dosages of feminizing hormones for at least a year before I became eligible for surgery. Thailand also required that I had lived as a woman, that I had completely transitioned socially for at least a year as well. I've been examined by a total of six mental health practitioners. Four of them were in the US, three of them with doctorate or nursing degrees, and two psychiatrists in Thailand, all of them had to agree I displayed a history of gender dysphoria and gender nonconforming behavior sufficient to justify undergoing the procedures I asked for. And now finally, let me talk about the cost. I had my gender affirming surgery on the cheap because the insurance policy I paid for decades denied my claim. Now on the cheap, in this case, has amounted to about $40,000 when I add all the costs up. This came from my pocket or my savings. I have not had a single bit of my gender-affirming care covered by insurance. But paying for all care on my own allowed me to move more quickly. A total of just over two years to transition socially, get enough hormone therapy, plan the whole trip, get the surgery, and now to be in recovery and make videos about the process. If I had been reliant on insurance, my timeline would easily have ballooned by an additional three to five years. So looking back at all of this, I understand how that depressed 12 year old in 1982, me, had to wait 40 years to complete this process. But in no way can I believe a depressed 12 year old in the US today is gonna to drop by the local gender affirming surgery clinic on the way home from junior high school and walk away with a procedure he never wanted in the first place. The barriers already in place are high. And they are high for a reason. Those barriers protect precisely the children the comment lamented we must save against the likes of videos like mine. But believe me, sister, and take it from one who spent decades of life and tens of thousands of dollars to achieve what I did, that's one saved fucking kid. Talk soon. Bye!